This video is brought to you by Audible. Hey everybody, how's it going? As you can probably tell already, this is going to be a different kind of video from what I normally do on this channel. There's no spinning around, there's no music, uh, there's no a lot of things. It's going to be a very bare bones vlog style video. And by the way, if you like that kind of thing, uh, before I get started, I should let you know, I do have a second channel. Uh, many of you know about it. Most of you probably don't, but it's called Joe Scott TMI. If you like the vlog style kind of thing, this is what I do on there. And I talk about, I follow up things on, on videos that I do on this channel. I talk about things that don't really fit in this channel. I just kind of share my life kind of stuff. That's why I call it TMI, too much information. Uh, but a lot of people that follow it have told me that they actually like that better than this channel. But uh, if, if it's something you're into, I'll put a little doobly-doo up here. And I'll put a link down in the description. Uh, feel free to go check that out if you want to. So last week I talked about all the bummers in the world, all the things that are uh, got me worried about the future. And, um, you know, funny thing about that video was that it was actually pretty difficult for me to get through because my, my typical cadence when I'm presenting a topic is, you know, I talk about the bad stuff, and then I talk about the good stuff, and then, you know, another con, then another pro, you know, because there's a balance there. There's always a little back and forth. Um, even if it's something that I'm very, very into and very supportive of, you're not doing that subject any service by not talking about the thorn on the rose. You know, you got you got to cover that kind of stuff. Um, and so as I'm sitting here doing this video last week for all the negative stuff, all the stuff I'm worried about, I kept finding myself wanting to go back into that positive territory and being like, yes, this is bad, but there are these other things. And it was just it, it was funny to me how difficult that was for me <laughs> to uh, to not do that. I was saving it up. I was holding off for this video. And you might be wondering, why am I doing this video like this? Why am I doing more of a vlog style thing uh, instead of, you know, the type of video that I normally do? And partially it's because I'm kind of trying to make things easier on myself for December and for the holidays and whatnot. And also partially because this is the last video of the year and not just the last video of the year, last video of the decade. This is the whole thing. And I want to just kind of be up close and personal with you guys. I want to just kind of be an intimate thing. So, so that's what this is. This is just me kind of off the cuff talking about some of the things that, um, you know, kind of go counter to what I was saying last week, the, the, the good side of, of all that kind of stuff, but also just general reasons why I am generally optimistic about the future is as, as, as negative as last week's video was. And as far as I go into the, like the existential angst kind of thing on this channel on a regular basis, uh, in general, I'm a pretty optimistic guy. So here's my chance to just kind of let that out for you. The first is just, and, and these are promises, so you can take this with a grain of salt if you want to, but a majority of countries around the world have made a promise or a pledge to go carbon neutral by 2050. Again, not all of them are going to get there. There are some smaller countries like Bhutan that have already gotten there. Now, that's a very small country <laughs> and uh, they don't have a, a large uh, amount of electricity consumption. But hey, it's a start. And I kind of pointed out that, that renewables only account for 30% of our energy production in the world right now. I, I kind of played that as a negative last week, but let's just look at it as a positive. That's that's a third. That's a third of our energy is coming from totally renewable sources. Um, that's that's something to celebrate. That has not always been true. That's actually a fairly new thing, and it is growing year by year. In fact, if you look back over the last 10 years, it's doubled in the last 10 years. So if that trend were to continue, you could expect by the year 2030 that we would have 60% of our electricity and energy sources being renewable. That's something to celebrate. You know, one, one positive thing I can point out is uh, BP ChargeMaster. Well, they're not just BP anymore. They're now BP ChargeMaster, meaning they're getting a lot more into uh, the charging infrastructure. They're seeing that there's money to be made there and they're going that direction. And ultimately, we live in a capitalist society and those are the things that are going to move things along. In fact, the expansion of charging networks has been phenomenal just over the last few years. There was a study released by some market analysts that predicted that um, the charging infrastructure is right now valued at $5.3 billion. By 2023, it's expected to be $30 billion. So when you see that level of growth and that level of opportunity, people are going to be putting more money into that. Corporations, investors, they're going to be investing money into it, and that's going to speed things along even more. You know, the cost of renewable energy is plummeting, especially solar and wind. Uh, hydropower has gone down a little bit, but hydropower is a big and expensive thing to set up. But the point is, solar and wind uh, energy has gone up exponentially. I said in a previous video that, that solar energy has gone down 76% since 2012. In fact, solar production over the last 10 years has gone from, 
I got to look. 12 terawatts in 2008 to over 500 terawatts in 2018. It's literally increased 48 times in the last 10 years. We can expect a trend to continue in that direction over the coming 10 years. And of course, as a fan of EVs, I am super stoked about all the cool uh, electric models that are coming out from not only new startups, but also the traditional automakers. We've talked about this a million times. Ford with their uh, Rivian partnership and the Rivian trucks, the RT1 is going to be coming out as R1T. Uh, it's, it's coming out this year in 2020. That's something to look forward to. The Volkswagen with their MEB platform, and they've got several different models on that one in North America. The ID4 is the one that's going to be coming out there. Uh, Polestar 2 is going to be coming out in 2020. Um, the Kia Soul EV is coming out. The Volvo XC40. I have to actually look here. All of these are spectacular electric cars with great ranges and it's just such a refreshing change from the whole compliance car thing that the auto industry had going for the longest time you know they had a fleet average um uh, fuel economy that they had to meet so they were like making all these ga gas guzzling cars and we'll just we'll just make a couple of evs that nobody will actually want to buy just to kind of offset that whole thing that has been their paradigm for what like a decade now and now the traditional automakers are getting serious about it. GM and LG Chem just signed a $2.3 billion agreement to build batteries in Ohio that's going to create like over a thousand jobs. It is officially becoming a job maker and it's officially becoming a money maker for traditional auto companies. This is sort of a pivot point that we've been waiting on for a really long time and we're actually starting to see it as somebody that's into EVs. It's super exciting. And one of the more popular videos that I uh, had over the last couple of years was talking about fusion for good reason. There's a lot of stuff going on in fusion energy right now, a lot more so than ever before. And one of the things that's really encouraging is it's not just, you know, government and, you know, intergovernmental uh, organizations building things like uh, ITER over in France, which is an important project. And we're going to be watching that. Uh, they're expecting, I think, in 2025 to get first plasma out of that one, which is still you know, some years off, but there's a lot of private companies involved too. Some of which are founded by and, and supported by large, you know, billionaires like Bill Gates. Just to name some off here, First Light, Commonwealth Fusion Systems, TAE, General Fusion, uh, plus the 7X, Windelstein 7X generator over in, uh, in Germany. The US Navy is working on something to actually power some of their ships out at sea. A lot of people are now saying that it is a case of when, not if. This is definitely something that's going to happen. And once it does, that is the holy grail of, of energy. And I really think that we could see some form of fusion energy, at least in a prototype stage, by the end of this next decade. And by the end of the decade after that, I think we will actually have commercial fusion energy systems that are powering cities and homes and everything. Now, in the meantime, I talked a minute ago about something that can help sort of mitigate the fact that we might not get fully carbon neutral in terms of the production of energy that we have going on by the year 2030. But I am gung-ho about carbon capture systems. The direct air capture technologies have gotten uh, a lot more efficient. Uh, there's, there's a new one that just came out in the last couple of months that uses nanotubes in a two tank system that has a very slight charge to attract carbon dioxide that collects to these little nanotubes. And this is a far less energy intensive system than some of the previous ones. Who knows? I mean, in the next five years, you might be able to set a ca carbon capture system out in your backyard, collect carbon dioxide in a tank. Somebody comes around and picks it up and you could get paid for that because they could then take that CO2 and go make fuel out of it. Carbon neutral fuel. I uh, don't wanna to go too far down this rabbit hole right now. I promise you, you'll be hearing more about this in the coming year. It's something I've become really obsessed by and passionate about. And, uh, and I really think that it holds a lot of promise for getting us where we need to be on this whole thing. I didn't talk about this in the last video, but there's, there's a lot of stuff to be um, excited about or happy about or optimistic about in terms of uh, cancer research. There have been advancements in immunotherapy over the last couple of years when fighting cancer, which basically takes our own immune system and weaponizes it specifically against can cancer cells. And there's been a lot of great progress there. There's been some, some huge studies that have produced some amazing results. Th they're looking at in the next few years this becoming more widespread and becoming a total game changer when it comes to fighting cancer. But in general, there, there's been positive progress for a few decades now. Cancer death rates have fallen every single year since 1992. 
Uh, molecular diagnostics is a thing that has become more and more refined over the years so that they can find it earlier and earlier with smaller traces. There's actually a friend of mine I've been uh, friends with for about 15 years now, and pretty much the whole time I have known him, he's had this specific kind of cancer that apparently does not respond to chemotherapy. You can only irradiate it and cut it out, so he's had multiple surgeries over and over again. Long story short, thankfully he's still with us, uh, but he spends a lot of time at MD Anderson down in Houston. Now, MD Anderson is one of the most prestigious cancer um, hospitals in the whole world, he talks about these doctors and the way that they talk about cancer and the way the, the cancer treatments are accelerating. He truly believes, and his doctors truly believe, that in another 10 years, maybe 15 years, cancer will not be a death sentence anymore. Like, it might not be something you can necessarily cure, but it's something that you could manage and just live with. And in fact, there are certain types of rare cancers that have already been completely cured. There's one type of cancer therapy that actually takes an HIV virus and reprograms it to only attack cancer cells. I mean, that's amazing. And of course, I'm super pumped about space and everything that's going on in this new space race that's happening right now. You know, I've, I've been into space since I was a kid, which is a long time ago. I kind of grew up in the shadow of what happened before I was born with Apollo. And, you know, the space shuttle was nice. It was fine. I had it up on my wall and everything. But it felt like, you know, the space race had kind of stagnated. And especially since 2011, when we retired the space shuttle and we haven't had our own manned or crewed program uh, in the United States, that is going to change next year with both Boeing and SpaceX putting crewed uh, missions up into space. America will be launching human beings into space again. It's super exciting to see what's going on with Rocket Lab. They now have a system set up where they can make a rocket in 12 hours. They can make a rocket every 12 hours. They've got a new launch complex that's going to be going up in Virginia, I believe. So now they've got two different launch facilities. Super exciting stuff. Now they're also looking at um, uh, doing reusable rockets because they're going to try to catch them out of the air. It's just so it's it's just super cool. Rocket Lab is a super cool company and they're doing super, super cool stuff and they need to get shouted out more. We're actually talking about going back to the moon again like for real. Artemis program is is revving up. They're really looking at being up there. The idea of there actually being moon colonies or moon bases is an actual thing that I think I could see now. That there there wasn't even a, a light at the end of the tunnel for the longest time. Now there's a light there and it's not just NASA, but it's also SpaceX with the Starship. Um, there's, there's other, other programs are looking at, at getting to the moon. This is an actual thing that's happening. And what gets me excited about these private companies that are getting involved in the, in the space race now, or the fact that this new space race is between private companies is because private companies can have a better long-term strategy. I, I feel like, and you guys can disagree with me on this if you want, but, um, you know, the problem with, with government stuff is that every four years, the government changes in some way. And the priorities change along with it. So one president's or one presidential administration's uh, pet project with space will go away and another one will kick in and, and there's billions of dollars that just get wasted. But with a private company, there's no four year, you know, uh, periods that, that alternate between different ideas. They have one solid idea and they point toward that idea. That's, I think, why some people get so excited about SpaceX. There's there's a singular vision and it's not going to change and they are on their way to Mars and they're doing this and they've got that one path and they're following it. And everything that they're doing is kind of iterating and adjusting to try to get to that goal. And I also talked in the last video about how the internet seems to be sort of uh, dividing us quite a bit and that's still a problem. There's one thing that gives me hope. Mr. Rogers. I feel like Mr. Rogers is having a bit of a moment all of a sudden. You know, there was that documentary last year called Won't You Be My Neighbor? And then there's a Tom Hanks movie that just came out. Uh, I think A Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood is what it was called. Suddenly everybody's all about Mr. Rogers all of a sudden. And I think that is the pendulum swinging back the other way. I think we're just so tired of the divisiveness and we're so tired of constantly being at each other's throats and everybody being pissed off about everything all the time. I think we are starting to kind of just get tired of that and we want to move back toward kindness. I think this sort of swing and this renewed interest in Mr. Rogers, not just Mr. Rogers, but Steve Irwin and Bob Ross, they're called the Holy Trinity of Wholesomeness. I, I see that on the internet quite a bit. And I, I just think that's a reaction to all the negativity that's going on out there. And, and it just, it's good to be reminded that we're not all bad, that ultimately we do want positivity in our lives and we do have sort of 
gears and genes and DNA that, that point us toward happiness and goodness and taking care of others. But I have to say, and I know this is super cheese, but um, if there's anything that makes me most optimistic and looking forward to the future, it's you guys. Truly, it's it's you guys. Um, I've the, the support that I've gotten over this last year on this channel and the comments, you know, on Twitter, Facebook and in Patreon and everything. Um, it, it just, it just keeps blowing me away that you guys are so, uh, so supportive and I can't thank you guys enough for supporting this channel and letting me do this and, and, and having the life that I've gotten to have. I mean, the last couple of years for me, since I started doing this full time, I, I didn't know I could be this happy. <laughs> and, uh, and I, and I hope that my my doing this and making jokes and putting some smiles on people's faces hopefully this is some way of giving back yeah i just i i i want you guys to always know that i know where this comes from i wouldn't i wouldn't be doing this if it wasn't for you and if it wasn't for your support you know at the end of every video i do my little sign off where i say love you guys and it is just sort of my sign off on one hand but it, it's also very true you you guys have made it possible for me uh, to do this and I cannot thank you enough. And hey, while you're still here, if you love visions of a positive future, you might want to check out The Future of Humanity by Michio Kaku on Audible. Michio Kaku is a world-renowned futurist who's one of the top thinkers when it comes to the future of technology, and in this book he turns his attention to the future of the human race itself. Who we'll be, how we'll live, and where we'll go in the future. He discusses upcoming breakthroughs in robotics, nanotechnology, and biotechnology that will allow us to live longer, more prosperously, and travel further than we ever thought possible, and ultimately, go beyond our human selves. This is, of course, just one of thousands of titles on Audible by some of the top authors in nonfiction, science fiction, and any other kind of fiction you're into, and viewers of this channel can sign up at audible.com slash Scott and get 30 days of Audible absolutely free. You can choose one audiobook and two Audible originals, and you can download them on any device, take it with you anywhere you want to go. So if you're one of the everybody who says they're going to read more books in the new year, Audible is a great way to get your pages in. And by the way, just to help people stick to their goals, if you finish three audiobooks by March 3rd, Audible will give you a free $20 Amazon gift card. So that's cool. So get a head start on your reading and sign up for free at audible.com slash Joe Scott or text Joe Scott to 500-500 to get started today. With that, I'm going to close this out. You guys, I hope you had a great year, um, and I hope that the coming year is even better for you. Happy 2020 to everybody. Please have fun celebrating and be safe. I want you here next week. <laughs> but here's to uh, a new year and all the cool stuff that's going to come along with it together, you and me. So uh, have a great one. Love you guys, for real, and I'll see you next year. Peace.